Hi, this is Rob Robin at the Goodman Theater, where this month the Goodman Theater has been presenting Thornton Wilder's The Matchmaker. I'm here to introduce one of its cast members, Anita Hollander. Anita, welcome to our show. Tell us, for maybe people may not know, what is the plot of The Matchmaker? The Matchmaker is a Thornton Wilder play where uh, a character named Dolly Levi, born Gallagher, uh, is sort of like manipulates the situation where people find each other and end up together right. in a funny sort of way. Um, did someone once make a musical out of that? Dolly, hmm, yes, Hello Dolly, right. which in fact will be back on Broadway next year in 2017 with Bette Midler playing. Right, I can't here. wait, yeah. So um, tell us your journey to disability. My journey to disability, well, uh, I had two legs when I was born, and at the age of 21, I developed uh, cancer in the nerve of the motor nerve of my left leg and uh, took uh, 10 doctors to f and nine months to figure out that there was something seriously wrong and I had an operation to remove the nerve and I was in junior year at Carnegie Mellon at the time and five years later the tumor recurred so I saved they saved my leg the first time but five years later the tumor recurred in the same leg in this in the bit of nerve that was left over and I had it amputated when I was 26. Wow so um, you I gather you have theatrical training background and where did you get it? I started acting when I professionally when I was eight wow. years old and uh, I trained um, at the Cleveland Playhouse, uh, Heights Youth Theater, and then at Carnegie Mellon University. But all the while that I was growing up, I was doing professional theater and television commercials and stuff That's like that. Right. So by the well. time I was an adult, I was already a pretty seasoned actor with a resume. By the time I lost my leg, I had a huge resume already. Wow. So. I grew up in Cleveland. Cleveland, wow. Okay. Yeah, my first job at eight years old was The Sound of Music at Music Carnival, a, a professional summer theater. Yeah, yeah. And did you ever work at the Cleveland Playhouse? Yes, yes. Yeah. I, I was an, uh, a curtain puller, as they called it in those days when I was a child. Uh, it's like the oldest re rep regional repertory theater in the country, I think. Wow. Well, so when you became disabled, did you think your life was over? No, actually quite the opposite, that um, because I'd had the two occurrences of cancer, one while I was at Carnegie Mellon and I went back to school six weeks later, um, the second time around when I was 26, I was in the middle of rehearsals for Jacques Brel is Alive and Well and Living in Paris when I was in Boston. I was living in Boston. and. Uh, when they said I had to have the amputation, it was like, well, let's get it done quickly because I have to get back to rehearsals because I was directing it and oh, in it. Wow. So I went back to rehearsals two weeks after the amputation and we opened the show four weeks after the amputation. Wow. And yeah. So it was a, we were rushing everybody. I was rushing the guy to make me some kind of leg and it was a temporary, it was a bucket and a pole basically wow. to get around the stage. Um, Tell us about when you played Laura in The Glass Menagerie. I find that so interesting. That was a great experience. Uh, right after I graduated from Carnegie Mellon with my class, because I oh, caught up wow. with them, um, I got a summer stock job right out of school, and it was several shows. It was Stop the World, I Want to Get Off, Glass Menagerie, and a Gershwin review at um, Burke Summer Theater in Pennsylvania. And I got to play Laura in Glass Menagerie, and I actually, at that time, had a brace on my leg. It was a plastic wow. brace underneath my tights. And when I auditioned, they thought I was faking the walk, you know, the, the limp. But they gave me the part. I mean, I got the job. And then when they met me, in, you know, when they, I, I got there to do the job, they were like, oh, we thought, we didn't know you actually had a brace on your leg. And then when I did the job, um, the critics, one of the critics said, oh, she was a really good Laura, but her limp was unconvincing, <laughs> which was, I thought was very funny because, you know, I actually had a brace on my leg. <laughs> well, yeah, I know it's kind of like, um, years ago, the Goodman did a production of She Always Said Pablo with uh, the actress, my good friend, Susan Nussbaum, who is in a Oh, yes, film. yes. And, you know, people at the original production, which was done at the old Iron Institute, I didn't know Gertrude Stein had a wheelchair. Gertrude Stein did have a wheelchair? No, no, I'm sorry, no. 
but people were just so freaked out that what is an actress in a wheelchair doing? Playing was she playing Gertrude Stein? Yes. Because I'm about to play Gertrude oh, Stein in well. New York. That's oh, like that's crazy. I know of Susan Nuss Nussbaum and Mike Irvin, uh, yeah. the whole Chicago right. group, yeah, yeah. and the Crip Sundays. Right. And so I, I've been following that for years wow. now, just trying to figure out how I could be a part of that, because I wanted to be. Yeah. And I've met with Mike several times. He came to see my show, too, oh, a couple weeks ago. But um, I think that's cool that she's playing Gertrude Stein. But uh, yeah, they go, why? That's a very good, interesting thing yeah. that you say because a character, when you're playing a historical character and you have a disability, people go, like, well, why is that, you know? But you don't have to. Yeah. The disability doesn't have to be a part of the character. If right. you're the right actor for the role, it doesn't matter. Right. And I've played so many roles. That and tell us about some of the roles. Like, Fraulein Schneider in Cabaret is not thought of as no, having an artificial no, leg, right. but nobody really knew that I had that. I mean, Meg in uh, Damn Yankees, Golda yeah. and Fiddler on the Roof. I've played all these roles. Cats, I played Grizabella in oh, Cats, who sings Memory, right. and she's supposed to be a bit uh, war torn. She's supposed yeah. to, and, and what you usually see is a non disabled actress limping across the stage yeah. fakely and sort of like looking pathetic. Well, I played it without my artificial leg as a three legged cat because you see three legged cats and three legged right. dogs right. and they just get on with their lives, right? right. Well, that's what I thought of as Grizabella is that she, I, I danced and I sang and I, and I got all over the stage with no crutches, no artificial leg, no other means of mo movement, just me and my three limbs. And uh, I did all this great choreography and stuff, and then stood up and sang Memory on one leg. And the way I sang it, it was like, don't feel sorry for me. It was more like, don't cry for me, Argentina. Because it was basically, I don't feel sorry for myself. I don't know why you guys don't accept me, but I don't feel sorry for myself. Because if you touch me, I, I, un uh, you'll understand what happiness is. Because I understand what happiness wow. is as a three-legged cat. And where did you play? And cats. Uh, two, two different uh, theaters, the Surflight Theater uh, in Beach Haven on um, Long Beach Island okay. in New Jersey, and the other was Ocean Professional Theater in uh, Barnegat, New Jersey. That's great. Two, but the same producer in both cases just wanted me to get out there and show that. And it was funny that they were nine years apart, and the audience from the Surflight Theater production was very anxious. They all came to the one nine years later and brought their friends because it was like, you have to see this, because wow. it was very special. Does it bother you? You know, I know sometimes people will say about when we're cast in shows, oh, isn't that wonderful? Is there anything wrong with that? I mean, it's funny that I just used the word special because right. that's what people use. They right. go, oh, isn't that special? Yeah. And aren't you special? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, well, you know, I was touring in San Diego and I was walking on the beach and someone walked by me and said, I think what you're doing is just great. And that turned into a whole thing that my daughter and I put together, the look list, when people oh, see wow. us or see me and the things that they say and the things that they do, because there's all different kinds of reactions. I get walking down the streets of New York on one leg yeah. and crutches, and certainly in San Diego it was very positive and wow, that's so special, <laughs> you know. But in fact, it's just me walking down the beach yeah. and, or me just walking down 8th Avenue. But uh, it's it's been an interesting thing because we have all these different looks like, you know, the over the shoulder, but I'm not really looking because New Yorkers aren't really right. that interested, but they really are. It's like, you know, uh, or why did you ruin my day look? Like, oh, really? Really, do I have to look at this one like person? And there's all different reactions. And do you think, are we held to an extra standard? Because I know. Yes. Yeah, okay. I will so answer that. that with a one way. Yes, yeah. because when we go to an audition, um, particularly, right. we can't just be a little better than the other person. We have to be like 40 times better. I mean, I'm, we're sitting in the lounge of the Goodman Theater, and Cheetah Rivera is on the wall where she played um, the character in The Visit, who's mm -hmm. the lead character who has one leg. Well, I was up for her understudy in New York on, when she did it on Broadway, and I was down to the last two people. Of course, the other person did not have one leg, and I did. And I'm the only person I think they've ever seen for the role who has one leg and who can sing the role and who is a great actor. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm bragging, but I'm actually up to the 
up to the, this thing because I've been up for Broadway shows a lot. Oh. So they all were like excited about it and the, we were, it was looking like I was going to actually get it, but the other girl got it. And well, actually in the end, they called Donna McKechnie to be her understudy. So, but the, the interesting thing was that I couldn't just be great. I had to be over the top, phenomenal, beyond any human understanding. Mm -hmm. And that's what's frustrating because I get to the last round of auditions with one other person and everyone at the table except maybe the director is convinced that, that I'm the person to work with. And you don't have to just convince them that you're good, you have to convince them that you're a person they'd like to spend time in the rehearsal room, which is true of all actors. People, a lot of people get the role because the team really likes them. I think I got the Goodman role partly because I was great and partly because Henry wanted to work with me. Thank God, uh, Henry Wishcamper, one of the greatest directors. I really enjoy working with him so much. And part of it is, as when I've been a director, I think part of it is that I want to work with that actor because I just feel comfortable and I like that person. And, and I think, I hope that that was, I, I would think that that was part of it. So you can't just be great and talented and got the chops, but you have to be a person that people feel comfortable and want to work with. A lot of people don't feel comfortable with the idea of working with someone who's in a wheelchair or who has one leg or, and who has no qualms about it. You know, they, it's their own problems that, that you have to overcome. Okay. And I think what I like about this production, I understand that there are a lot of, there's a lot of diversity. In this it's production. a hugely diverse yeah. cast. We have people, uh, people of color, um, a couple African American people, a Muslim person, an Indi a person who has India as his background. Right. Um, he plays the sitar in the show. Right. Uh, we have women, we have age, we have, um, I don't know, it's just yeah. a lot of people from different yeah. backgrounds and yeah, cultures. Oh, and we have a transgender yeah. actor, too. And, you know, the original oh, Hello, Dolly, many people consider the best production was with Pearl Bailey and Cap Calloway. It's very Did you get a chance to see that? I saw the original Ch Carol Channing oh, wow. when I was a kid. I don't think I, no, I didn't yeah. see it, but I think I saw something that they did with it um, on television, so yeah. I saw parts yeah. of it. I mean, yeah. it's like, Queen Latifah will probably at some point yeah. play this mm -hmm. role. It's yeah. just so tailor-made. It was beautiful. Tell us, I know, understand you have a show called Still Standing. Tell us about Yes, that, that's my original show. I wrote oh, that. Wow. It's a, an original musical with 16 songs. It's called Still Standing, um, a, a musical survival guide for life's catastrophes. So it's basically 16 songs that are tools for survival. Well, represent tools for survival. So a song will represent having a great imagination or a perspective or chutzpah, you know, like yeah. having balls and, and having um, family, love, uh, children. Um, and are they original songs? They're all original. Wow. I wrote the music, I wrote the lyrics, and it took me about 16 years to write the whole wow. thing. But I've been doing it now for about 20 years all over the world country and all over the world too. That's great. Um, now I know you're on the AFTRA SAG committee. SAG-AFTRA, yeah, Screen Actors Guild, American Federation of Television and Radio Art Recording Artists now it's called. I used to be radio, but um, yes, I've been on the national board of AFTRA for many years and then the national board of SAG-AFTRA, but along with that I've been the national chair of performers with disabilities, so I rec I represent performers with disabilities, um, both in the boardroom and just in general in the industry. So I've represented performers with disabilities with the AMPTP, which is all the producers in Hollywood of television and film, and in New York with the Broadway producers. I'm the face and the person and the voice that kind of speaks to them. My um, vice chairs of the committee, Danny Woodburn, who's been seen on Seinfeld, who used to like. It's been on a lot of television and yeah. film, but he was famous for Seinfeld. He's a little person. Wow. And Steve Gladstone in Florida, who does a lot of stage acting as well as theater and uh, as well as television and film, and used to be in the recording industry, and he's blind. Mm -hmm. And Ka Christine Bruno in New York with Inclusion in the Arts, she's, my, she's now taking over the local New York mm -hmm. committee, and she has CP. And between all of us, we've worked very hard uh, to get great 
greater inclusion uh, of performers with disabilities, more auditions. We fight for more auditions. We don't ask for just hand us the jobs. We ask for the auditions. And we have RJ Mitty from, um, from that famous show about crack um oh, breaking bad i'm sorry rj the young kid who played the i shouldn't call him a kid he's a beautiful adult now but he started when he was a teenager doing the son of Wal uh, Mitty, uh, uh of the uh, i mean of uh, walter white walter white and um he has cp and uh other uh, jerry jewels on the committee right. and uh Alice, uh, Ali Stroker, and oh. I mean, I've really approached all the people in the business that have made a crack in it or punched a door open That's and to fight for it and be visible so that people can, and right here in town, Michael Patrick Thornton, yeah. who was on private practice and who is, done, is doing Richard III right, right now, and he's brilliant, and I got to see him. Okay. He also is on the committee. Okay. So, and he has his own theater company. So it's hard. These are very busy people. Yeah, yeah. So I, do, I don't take up too much of their time. But when we have a meeting, I like, you can hear I talk very fast. And we like barrel through our agenda. And I don't keep, I like start on time and end on time. Because these are busy, active people in the right. industry. And I think more people, the more people see that, yes. the more comfortable I'll get. And that's what really helped with the producers in Hollywood about a year ago right. when we went before them with this wonderful group. Uh, Robert David Hall, who I took over the chair of National Committee from Robert David Hall, who has been on CSI for 10 years, and he's a double amputee. And being in front of these people with Allie and Jerry and um, all these wonderful performers, and we had some deaf performers, uh, Troy Kotzer, uh, Antoinette Abamante, who has performed here at the Goodman before she's deaf. We, we had this slew of fabulous people sitting there. Oh, and um, Daryl Mitchell, Chill Mitchell, who was um, on Ed, the TV show oh, okay. Ed, he uses a wheelchair, and fabulous actor from stage and screen. You think, one thing I found, there was an agent here years ago, and you know, I said to her, you know, I don't want to use her real name, but, you know, why don't you get your um, clients together and we'll talk just at Access Living, which is the disability independent. Yes, so. yes. And she was like, you know, Rob, some of my clients don't really want anything to do with the other clients. Do you get that, that there's this? Um, the major star of Game of Thrones, who's about to host Saturday Night yeah. Live yeah. on Peter uh, Dinklage, Dinklage. It's an interesting story with Peter is, I mean, I, I met him when he was doing Richard III at the public and I was rehearsing for Wojciech. And uh, he's very shy he's, and he's a very private person and doesn't make a big deal about being a performer with a disability. He's fabulously talented. Yeah. We, but, but it's interesting that I think that he was moving forward at a time when a lot of performers with disabilities that you would think of performers with disabilities, you would think, well, they don't have a lot of talent or they're a little bit weird. Or so. And I was working with Joe Chaikin at the public when Peter was doing Richard III. And it was like I wanted to talk to him, but I, he was very yeah. mm -hmm. um, shy and a little, maybe a little, seemed a little reticent. So. I wasn't as bold as I am now, so I didn't have that conversation with him, and I feel like I missed an opportunity. But, but it's interesting because he's gotten an award from the Media Access Office. He, he got the Media a Access Award in LA a quite a few years ago, um, but doesn't really come out in right. fighting for us right. at this point. Maybe we'll get him. I mean, I keep pursuing him as the chair uh, to just say, you know, can you come out and yeah. sort of be a part of this? And maybe at some point he will. Yeah. But at this point, I can understand that you you want to relate to a group of people that you can feel yeah. are digni had, have dignity. And I think that more and more, this, this is becoming evident that we do have the chops. We have the training in the background. and. and what is your advice? Well, first of all, tell us a little bit about Joe Chaikin. Because yeah, I worked for 10 years with jo wow. Joseph Chaikin at the Public Theater, right. working on a piece called Body Songs. We changed the thing many times, but I think it ended up being Body Songs. There's a documentary out there about our process. Right. It was a hard process. Joe was, uh, was started the Living Theater with 
in New York yeah. in the underground sort of avant-garde. He did all kinds of avant-garde things, and um, with just with Molina and um, yeah. Judith yeah. Molina yeah. and Julie, Julian. Back. Back, right. And um, that was like in the 60s, 70s. And then, and then um, somewhere along the way, he became disabled. He, he got aphasia. He had a stroke and was aphasia. So he had to like write notes and couldn't communicate as well, which was fascinating to him yeah. because now he couldn't use his words. It was only one word he could use yeah. for everything he wanted to say. And he was, he was interested in pe performers with disabilities. So he got together these people in 19... 92 and we worked all the way for the next 10 years mm -hmm. on this project getting up and I wrote a lot of music for it as well as performing in it some of that music ended up in still standing because we didn't use it at the public but the public theater was helping uh, um, to, to move it forward but it just finally didn't didn't get together and didn't become anything. But we had John Beluso writing for us. We had Chuck Mee writing for us. We had some of the best in the business yeah. come in and work with us during those 10 years and some great actors and performers. And um, I don't really know, this is a ter terrible thing, but it didn't get its legs. <laughs> and you, no matter how many songs we wrote, no matter how many funny routines we did, no matter how many uh, people came came and saw our work, it didn't become a production. And I think that was Joe's vision, and I think he was disappointed in the end when he died that it didn't actually turn out. Um, what is your advice to young performers who say, I want to be an actor? It's get training yeah. and, and get as much experience as you can on any level, whether it's community theater or showcases or school or whatever. Um, the point is you cannot walk into an audition saying, well, I'm a performer with disabilities, so give me this job. And you make us all look bad if you don't have the training and you don't have the experience and the chops. The one major thing that we've had most trouble is getting, in, getting experience on camera. So getting a, taking a course on, of, on camera, it's for all of us, uh, it's been a tricky thing because as media changes from theater, f film, television, now internet, new media, it's more and more important how to work with a camera. And it's a challenge to all of us, including me. Um, Getting the training, I can't tell you. I mean, we've got an uh, actress, Reagan Linton, who's doing really well out in there in the theater, um, is actually a member of uh, the Oregon Shakespeare Company, I believe. And um, she uses a wheelchair. She's done Shakespeare all over the place. She got a degree at San Diego. She was one of the first... I think she was the first uh, wheelchair user to be accepted into their grad program for musical theater, I think it was, because she's a musical theater actor. Mm -hmm. She started out doing musical theater at the Family Theater, P-H-A-M-A-L-Y in Denver, which was something about physical handicaps and stuff like that, but they changed it just to use the word family. Um, in Denver, that was where she started. That's where she got her chops. And, and then she moved into uh, college, and then she did the grad program. And I met her along the way. She came to New York and we met. She's, you know, how do we do this? You know, how can I get involved? And now I've watched her just like zoom to the top. And I think she's going to be at Williamstown doing a role that we both auditioned for. I actually did the audition here at the Goodman. She got the role. She actually uses a wheelchair and it was for a wheelchair user. I was excited that I got the audition because I love the playwright. It's a new play. Um, but Reagan getting it made sense because she actually lives her life in a wheelchair. So, and Allie and I have. Ellie yeah. Stroker's doing well, and she got the Broadway role in Spring Awakening, which was great, so that we finally got somebody on Broadway who actually uses a wheelchair. So it's been a good year, I have to say, that people have broken a lot of barriers. Great. Well, Anita, I think that's all we have for today. Any other words you'd like to? Um, well, I will say that a, a theater that I uh, support and have done a lot of work with in New York is Theater Breaking Through Barriers, TBTV. It started out as Theater by the Blind, but it wasn't, then it grew out of being just blind actors. And now it's been uh, actors with disabilities and non disabled actors. It's always been a mix, but, um, but now it's a mix of many disabilities. And we've got famous, uh, we've got John Guire writing for us and uh, David Henry Huang writing for us. Um, we've gotten all these wonderful plays 
playwrights in to to commission them to write and it's off Broadway it's on 42nd Street so I've done a lot of work with them and we've taken things to Zagreb in Croatia and to Japan got to go to Japan with them so I just wanted to give a shout out to them thank you Anita for coming on our show and to the Goodman Theater um, thank you for casting Anita keep casting more people with disabilities and as Barnaby Tucker says in the show Go out and have some great adventure in your life. Thank you. <laughs>